The fourth presenter is Sir Dr. Michael N. N. Quenty. Sir Dr. Michael N. N. Quenty is at the moment the lead inspector for educational technologies in Cameroon, Ministry of Basic Education for close to 14 years and a senior lecturer of educational technologies at the Higher Teacher Training College University of Yaoundé. As an independent consultant for the Commonwealth of Learning, Sir Dr. Nkwanti has served as an educational technology consultant for many national projects funding, funded by the UNESCO Regional Bureau for Central Africa. He has 24 individual and collective publications in the field of education and educational technologies. He holds three prestigious awards, Open University Malaysia Book Prize Award for Best Master Students 2010, the Knight of Cameroon Academic Honor 2018 conferred by the Ministers of Education for Valuable Contribution to Education, and the Knight of Cameroon Order of Valor 2019. I will now invite Sir Dr. Michael N. N. Quinty to deliver his presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to all the other speakers who've gone before, who've spoken before me. I also want to seize this opportunity to thank uh, the organizers of this webinar for inviting me to share our own experience from Cameroon. Great. This morning, I am going to take you a little bit from the shift of the trend. I mean, from the trend of discussions, you're going to see something different coming from uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, most especially from uh, Central Africa, uh, where uh, I am based. And my paper is looking at the stakeholders' involvement in the co-design of technology-mediated learning with lessons we learn during this process. Uh, quickly, I want to say that uh, I wouldn't want to belabor the points, but I want to say quickly here that schools in Cameroon were shut down on the 18th of uh, March uh, 2020 because of the disease. And we have a huge student uh, learners population here. I'm speaking from the perspective of second of basic and secondary schools in Cameroon, one of the departments which I'm heading. And I will share a little bit of experience what is happening in the university. Now, when you look at the data which I just presented, we have about 6 million children in primary schools to handle, about 3 million children to, hand, to take care of in secondary schools, and about 1 million children to take care of in the university. Uh, we have quite a huge challenge. And our challenges are in terms of learning and in terms of technology infrastructure. Uh, before the ad advent of the epidemic, uh, let me quickly say here that uh, curriculum delivery in Cameroon at all levels of educational system is entirely conventional. That is classroom based. And um, teaching and learning, te teaching through mediated learning platform is, is quite at its very early stage. We've not yet advanced like what I just learned from most of the speakers taking part in this webinar. And um, we also have a challenge of teachers not trained. Many learners are unable to use technology appropriately. And the majority of school level, at school level, there are still many um, teachers, and many, many students who do not have access to technology. So the majority of school, at um, I see use I see uh, before the close I mean before the advent of the pandemic, uh, schools had at least advanced with your academic with their program coverage and uh, most of the schools the program coverage was already at eighty percent at all levels and uh, because uh, at the moment we are preparing at this particular moment normally this is uh, summer holidays when students are supposed to have vacated and by the time the advent of the uh, pandemic. 80% of the program had been covered. And so what was done was uh, that the program was assessed and uh, most teachers were still unable to use technology. Many teachers are still unable to use technology and unlike what I'm hearing from many other countries here, uh, you, you guys are quite advanced as far as that is concerned with special programs put in place for the distribution of laptops to, uh, to students. Now regarding infrastructure, for us to be able to choose the kind of technology that we need to use in order to uh, be able to reach out to learners during this period, we had to do some desktop research to find out the trend of data as far as that is concerned. And if you look at the statistics, which I'm just showing you here on the screen, uh, you will see that uh, 
Cameroon is not as advanced as most of you are thinking, but what, one of the devices which we found that has really penetrated uh, the, 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 the national territory is uh, the mobile phone, where about 90% of Cameroonians have access to, number, to mobile phone. We also have about 39.4% uh, use computers to access internet. Uh, internet penetration is still very low, 30%. You can imagine that. So it's, it, opting to use a technology-based solution is, uh, is uh, will, will, will probably be bring, uh, strengthening the digital divide, which most of us are, are trying to cry far on it. And we try to look at all, our, all of these statistics. We realize that most, of the, most, of the, most people access their, the internet through... Um, mobile devices and uh, to look at the social media platform and we saw that many people are using social media platforms and so we thought that all of these could be a uh, could be some uh, startup in, uh, indicators to orientate us on how we can design content that will be able to attain them as especially those who are in remote communities uh, we also found out that when it comes to tv coverage we have a large majority of the citizens are covered through TV based nationwide. And the advantage we had at the level of the university is that last year in 2019, uh, 500,000 university students were, were given laptop as a special gift from the president of our country. And so looking at all of this, uh, we had to proceed to put in place stakeholders, look for who can help us to do what, and we thought that a co-design process will be very helpful for us to be able to choose, to, for us to be able to sail through these challenges at a very short time. And so we had learners' involvement, and their, we had learners' involvement. Their, their role in the process was to um, let them tell us what their needs are, what are their preferential technologies they would like to, they, they are very versed with, and they will be able to have access to content. We had teachers coming on board as the key, one of the key stakeholders to design the content and deliver them using uh, appropriate technology and also to provide psychosocial support to learners because uh, a lot of people uh, with the advent of this uh, pandemic, uh, there is a lot of psychological imbalance amongst uh, learners and even families. We also had parents who are playing a very key role because uh, with school disruption and school close down, parents have become the first teachers of their children, they are now assuming that rule which is given to them by birth. They are now the one who follow up their children at home, especially as we're dealing with the younger children in primary schools and secondary schools. Parents play a very key role and they too had to be part of this school design process. Now we also had the ministries of policymakers at the level of ministry deciding, I mean, negotiating with technical and financial partners to look source for the necessary financial resources, designing training programs to help teachers be able to do, uh, be able to produce preliminary content that we can be, that can be delivered through um, um, the medium, which we had identified as accessible to our own learners. And then we had teachers syndicate because the teachers syndicate play a very, a major role. What they do most often is they are the one who gives instruction to the teachers. So we had to bring them on board to tell us if they buy in or not. Of course, we had our technical and financial partner who have been very instrumental in the process. We had uh, uh, UNESCO, Cameroon is, very, is helping us significantly uh, with the mobilization of funds to be able to provide, uh, to be able to provide uh, requisite technological devices to learners, especially those in the rural areas, and also to assist in the training of teachers because, like I said, most teachers, especially those in the rural area, because Cameroon is most in the rural areas, most teachers, especially in the rural areas, do not have access to technologies, do not have access to, to internet. It's a major problem. And so UNICEF, UNESCO is helping us in that area. UNICEF as well is helping us in that area. And given that we realize that most homes have access to television, you will probably be very surprised that with the advent of COVID, it is now that we, uh, our government, our police, our government is laying emphasis on um, 
technology mediated learning and we had envisaged the, the radio and television and so you'll be very surprised that we are still at the level of radio and television that's how content is being delivered to learners through these um, platforms and what the radio stations what they do is what the tv and the radio station have helped decks where learners can call when a presentation is going on or when an election is going on they can call if you have any issue, you can call and ask your questions, which will be addressed to by the concerned teacher. Uh, we also have the Ministry of Post and Telecommunication playing a very significant role here in helping us digitalize the resources and providing internet connectivity. For one, for the first time, uh, we are now we uh, we uh, those who have who are connected to what we call the national telecom telecommunication uh, network. Tamtel, which um, provides internet connectivity, they've stepped, they've cut down the costs of internet connection, and it's making, giving it opportunity to most people to have access to it. I'm also benefiting from it because I can be able to broadcast this, participate in this program freely because I have five gigabytes free a day, and a very reduced rate. So it's something which is very helpful. So these are the rules the key different stakeholders were able to do in as far as this is concerned. Now, but when it comes to the content, content that were produced during this uh, process, uh, content that are broadcast to television and radio, like I already said, uh, we also produce print content, which are being distributed in the rural areas. You ask us, how is this being done? We send them through internet at our regional services where they download the materials and ping them and drop them in schools. And the person who, they wait for 72 hours, for teachers wait for 72 hours to pick up the resources because it is findings reveal that after, after 72 hours, whatever is the case, if, they, if something was carrying a virus, the virus should have died. So they have dropped at the rural, at their drop in schools, parents pick them after three days. And uh, in most rural communities where uh, all of these facilities are not accessible, uh, what the teachers do is uh, they provide activity books for children. They write exercises in activities book and allow them in school. Teachers, parents come and pick them after 72 hours and drop them back when the children will have finished the exercises after 72 hours so that enough time for the virus to disappear. Um, the lessons we learn here are threefold. The first is contextual analysis. You, as you, you would have realized or noticed from the beginning of my presenta presentation, uh, we at, at our different communities are at different level of development. Urban areas, semi-urban areas and rural areas are at different level of development and the technology penetration rate varies as far as these different areas are concerned. And so contextual analysis was very critical for us in order to identify exactly what solution works well in which context. Uh, the second point is learners inclusion in this, in the design process is critical because we are moving, the shift was so abrupt that we needed to get learners see, I mean, share their own point of view, what they think will be more adaptable to them and most more suitable to them. Uh, it's, it was very important that we include them and it's been very helpful. They are abducted, uh, they, they brought over the solution which we developed through the technologies that we used to deliver to learning to them. Our parents' involvement also has been very strategic and very critical and we found it very important as a lesson to be learned because we did close down Parents are the only ones giving uh, support to their children at home. So there is need to include them in the process. And we are thinking that uh, in the nearest future, uh, parents, if it's possible, parents should also receive some elementary pedagogic training so that they can adequately give support to children, to their children at home. It's very critical. Now, but when it comes to the university, like I already said, 500 thousand laptops were distributed and so they uh, even even though we had not fully migrated to uh, e-learning e-learning it's an opportunity it was an opportunity for schools for lecturers that we are to 
uh, start putting our courses online. Thank you very much. Can you talk about the challenges in terms of te technology infrastructure, strategic stakeholders in their, and their roles in the co-design of technology-mediated learning solutions in emergency situation, which you have clearly elaborated on that. You also talk about financial and technical partners, which I totally agree is of, of prime importance when you want to do something. You have to have collaboration of others as well. You also provided insights into contextual analysis, learner inclusion, plus parent involvement in design and implementation. Okay, thank you for your nice presentation.